of them drinking. To be close enough to lions to actually hear them drinking is a great privilege that we're all very lucky to be experiencing. Blacksmith Lapman really got excited. That was it calling there. It's a crescendo. Debbie, you said you are terrible at judging the animal sizes over the screen. And Debbie, I think it's very difficult for everyone, not just you, to be able to judge the animal size when not being here in person. So don't be too hard on yourself. You would like to know if these ladies will outweigh me. And yes, I weigh about 80 to 85 kilograms, depending on how many ice creams I've been eat eating in the recent times. And I guess that's about 180 to 200 pounds, roughly. And they will weigh more than that. Oh, a pearl spotted owl, it's calling. That. Where's the pearl spotted owlet? Um, so yes, Dr. Debbie, these ladies are going to be considerably heavier than me. They should, on average, weigh anywhere between 100 and 120 kilograms. So considerably larger than me. Looking at them, though, uh, it's hard to compare our anatomy in terms of weight to theirs because our body is in such strange portions. OK, well, it looks like the ladies are relaxing, and James has found you a wonderful view that he would like to share, so off you go. Everybody, I just wanted to quickly show you an incredible scene of a sort of volcanic look, uh, or volcanic colour sinking behind the Drakensberg there. You have the lions drinking in that incredible light, and I'm going to send you straight back to them now. But just look at the colour there. Isn't that unbelievable? That is the magnificent Dragon's Back or Drakensberg Mountains, the Hutzpreit dubious settlement uh, nestling in the shadows. Let's go back to Scott and the lions. And while you were gone, you'll notice we would have repositioned the vehicle ever so slightly. I had one or two tires actually in the Buffels or quarter hole to try and get the right angle which I feared we may have got stuck in, but thankfully our trusty jigger got us out. I really do hope and feel confident that these ladies are going to call for us tonight. With those other lions calling nearby, I'm feeling very hopeful. Maybe it's the missing member of their pride. You'll get to see them reunite. Hello to Doretta, who I think may be joining for the first time. It's a great pleasure to have you with us, Doretta. You like to know the ages of these lions, and it's difficult for me to say. Um, I would say, though, that the oldest lioness, who's got a very pale face in comparison to others that we'd obviously battle to see now because they're all facing away from us, but I'll put her at around eight years of age and the youngest probably around three to four years of age. So uh, mixed ages. There is also a fifth member of this pride, but she is missing at the moment. And what? Looks like this one might have a fur ball that she might be trying get it, to get rid of. She doesn't seem too comfortable. Let's see if she can't get comfortable. Hello, Dylan in Cedar Falls, Iowa. I think you may be watching in between 
your university lectures. What a great way to spend your free time between studying. You'd like to know why they all lined up to drink together, and it's the same reason why we see them all flopping around together now. They are highly, highly social cats, the only social cats really in the world. Most other cats, doesn't matter where you go on the planet, will not form big social groups like lions do. Occasionally, though, it must be said that coalitions of male cheetah are formed. That's the only example I can think of out of the African cats. Other than that, usually they're solitary, but lions are different. And this behavior that you can see here is confirming that. And that's also why they just like to do things together. It's, I guess, like you going to a pub with a group of your friends and renting a table together as opposed to going to opposite ends of the bar. Those two stopped and pricked up their ears, but the other two have not. So it would have been interesting to know what caught their attention, but had no impact on the other two. It was in the opposite direction to where we heard those other lines vocalizing now. The other lines are vocalizing. I don't think it's on Juma. I'm fairly confident it's further north and possibly even east of where we are. Hello, Mr. Moustache, who is watching in Iceland. I hope to come and visit you there one day, Mr. Moustache. That sounds like a very interesting part of the planet. You like to know if lions are scared of water, or dislike water, rather. is probably a better word. I think I don't think you use the word scared. Um, yes, they, lions of the Sabi Sands are not interested in getting their paws wet, only if they have to cross a river for a very good reason will they get their paws wet but they will never lounge in water like tigers would which is strange I mean you can't help but wonder why they don't because it would certainly keep them cool and especially considering that the lions of Botswana and other areas of Africa will become very comfortable with moving through the water Genre, let's see if we can capture this. There's a night jar that's come over the water here and it's drinking. It's, it's quite a, it's just moved off. That might come back. It's quite a slow moving. Here it comes back, Genre, from right, left to right. It's quite a slow moving bird, so we should be able to capture it, relatively speaking. Oh, well done, Genre. Look at this. Oh, imagine being able to just swoop down and take a sip like that so casually. Jandre made that look a lot easier than it was. I'm going to ask you while you're across there, Jandre, to just also show one more thing. And that is the, the night here, and it's at about 10 o'clock. I'll use my spotlight just above it, just below where my spotlight is. It should give you enough light, and it's busy hunting. This is the black crown night here that we saw earlier, and now we get to see it in full hunting mode. Look at that, poised and ready to send that sharp beak plummeting into the water after i'm guessing frogs in this case or tadpoles oh there's the blacksmith lapwing in the background that's the critter that made the noise early on when the lions were moving oh we found something to snack on there as well so the birds are upstaging the lions at this stage having said that though the lions have just popped pop, pop their heads up again so let's take a look at what they're up to So yes, Mr. Moustache, basically some lions in certain parts of Africa will become accustomed to water and more comfortable with it, like the lions of the Okavango Delta in Botswana. But the lions here of the Sabi Sands are not interested in getting wet. Look at that ear twitching to try and keep the flies at bay. They will continue to pester these lions. I wonder where you guys are going to head to from here. That's going to be interesting to see. I'm hoping they don't go too far and they're somewhere on Juma so we can try and track them down tomorrow morning. 
But what I hope more than that is that the Birmingham boys come and visit them. And also just check in on Juma. This is a portion of their territory that they do need to come and make sure there are no intruders or imposters. But who knows, maybe before the end of the safari they will get active. For now though, you guys are about to get active and head across onto James's vehicle. Hello everybody, we're just driving along the road at the moment. We have uh, seen a marvellous sunset. We went to Bilzog Dam to see if we could find, and we got a bump or two, see if we could find anything there. Not Bilzog Dam, obviously there's lots of Bilzog Dam. We just went to Sydney's Dam to see if there was anything there. I was hoping those dogs had maybe popped out, but they didn't pop out there at all. There were some water buck who were standing there looking a little bit sort of bemused by the state of affairs. I'm not sure why. Uh, perhaps they too listened to the state of the nation address last week. Oh, be quiet. Very noisy radio this afternoon. Anyway, it's become slightly too late to look for the dogs, and that's simply because it's got dark and we don't want to disturb them at night. They're not nocturnal predators. And just amazing that those lions popped up at the dam there. I just I can't believe that. We didn't see one track of them today. Not one. And that, I mean, I don't suppose that, I suppose that says, doesn't say much for our tracking, but Taxon was out here at a tracker on his vehicle, so did Aubrey, and they also didn't see any track. So I think what they did was sneak across uh, from Gallego Camp. I think they snuck across the road towards where we've actually watched them the last few mornings, the last time we've seen them. And then they just sort of, well, I don't know, almost flew towards Bivolzog Dam. There are roads in between, very few. One of them is Hyena Road, which is almost impossible to see any tracks on. So maybe that's what happened. Must have been what happened. And most pleased that they popped up. I'm now, of course, going to go to Bivolzog Dam and look for those black crown night herons every time I go anywhere near the place. But Scott's skill at finding small things like that is uh, really unparalleled, so I'm not sure I'll ever manage it. The sun, as you can see, has left some magnificent embers glowing on the tips of the Drakensberg there. And this is the first sunset we've had in about, oh, probably five days or so. We've had all that cloud, and tomorrow we'll be back to the heat. It was a very, very pleasant temperature today, a lovely 30 degrees. Scott says very kindly that he will repay me uh, with a fine drink when he, get back, when he gets back for the compliment that I just paid him. Thank you, Scott. That's very nice of you. Anyway, I think it has been the most incredible day. As you say, James Richard, unexpected sightings, hyenas, wild dogs, lions around the corner. That's why, of course, driving around this magnificent wonderland is always such fun. That's going to be it from us tonight. Thank you, David, for your efforts today. Well done. Uh, we're going to say thanks to Louise back on the vocals, of course, for the first time in a while. Leanne is heading back to Johannesburg tomorrow, I think, so she'll be off the keys. And in the morning, we, ha of course, we did... We must greet Jandre. He's back from a prolonged sojourn. He's with Scott. Let's go back to the Lions. Thank you for your comments and questions throughout the afternoon, and I'll see you tomorrow at 05.30. Bye-bye. Well, very kind words from Mr. Hendry. I think he may be exaggerating a little bit. He's also found some wonderful specimens, even today is a good example of his skill in finding you lots of wonderful things to look at but of course I thank him kindly things seem to have cooled off here no more lion calls it's just the blacksmith lapwing that you can hear dip, 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 dip. calling nearby but what a magical evening it's been you can still see a very faint pink tinge in those clouds and not only the animals, but the scenery, the clouds, the weather has all been absolutely fantastic on the Sunset Safari. If you have joined us for the first time, like Durette, 
please let us know your thoughts and feedback and who you are and where you're watching. We love to hear from new viewers or from the viewers who are silent ninjas who never get a hold of us. You too could let us know. I know Nikki's uncle Phil is one of those silent ninjas. Hello, Dominique, in Paris, and you're a brand new viewer that I was hoping to chat to, so thank you for getting a hold of us. And Dominique, you would like to know a little bit more about these lions and their possible habits of the night. Will they spend a lot of time sleeping? Will they be on the prowl? And it really does depend on the individual day and also the season, Dominique. But at the moment, tonight, I'm foreseeing that they're not going to be hugely active because they already have a full belly. It's not going to be comfortable to move around, lugging around whatever it is that they managed to feed on recently. It would have been last night that they caught something, or maybe sometime during the course of the day. We can't be certain. But we did see them coming past our camp at around 8.30, 9 o'clock last night, and they were definitely not full-bellied. Now, in general, though, Dominique, uh, your general rule for big cats and regular domestic cats, I think it's applicable to them as well, is that they will spend 16 to 20 hours sleeping every day. And in my history uh, with these animals, it's closer to the 20-hour mark as a general rule. Oh, there was a water thick knee calling there. Um, so, Dominique, to get them active and on the move requires a lot of luck and timing, and they do do the majority of moving at night when it's cool and there is cover of darkness. So, because we don't spend too much time out after dark, we don't get to see them moving as much as we would like to, but there are plans to start spending more time out after dark with the correct equipment so that we don't have to interfere with their ongoings. So that is in the pipeline and something to look forward to. And it's great to know that a new viewer is enjoying things all the way in Paris. The birds are going crazy. Like I said, it's the water thickness that we can mainly hear calling. Now here they go again. Those are the blacksmith lapwings. Hello Eileen, you would like to know if it's normal for lioness to split up from their pride. The fifth member of this pride is missing at the moment, and yes, it is normal. Reasons for it, hard to be certain. It's not, you, you'd assume that one major time that a lioness may peel away from the pride is when she is going off to mate, looking for love. So that would be a good example of when they may separate. Another very good example is three months after mating. Once they need to give birth, they will separate themselves from the pride, go give birth somewhere secluded, maybe join up with the pride to feed on a kill that they've made, but not take the cubs back as a general rule to the pride for a couple of weeks. So that would be another time that they would move off. Other times, it just simply cannot be explained. Even watching these four last nights on the quarantine clearings, three of them moved off and left one of them behind. And why that one felt that it made sense not to move initially with the pride we simply cannot understand or be certain of so some things in nature we will just never be able to explain and I guess this is an example of that they've all got their own personalities and moods just like we as humans do and I guess sometimes you could ask yourself why am I acting so strangely and even you may not know the answer to your own behavior Chandra, just to pan across quickly and show you the beautiful clouds while the lions have all got their heads down. Look at this. Absolutely fascinating scenes here, as well as sounds with all the birds calling. I hope you're all enjoying this. This is for Dominique and Direct, the new viewers. This is not your typical sunset safari. The sunset in itself has been magical and all the animals playing along with it is really made for a special evening and special memories that we're all sharing with one another. 
on a live safari. Can you believe it? Hard to believe. Now, another question has just come through. Interesting, or interested to know about the length of a lion from tip to toe. And I would say about eight feet from the tip of their nose to the tip of their tail would be the average length of a lioness. So yeah, in and around the eight feet mark, I'm just imagining myself lying next to one of them. And I'm about six foot, and I think they would have an extra couple of feet on me once they are fully extended. In terms of their shoulder height, probably about three and a half four feet at the shoulder. Come on, ladies, there's just a minute and some change left. Why don't you call for us, please? Hello, Virginia. You would like to know if Amber Eyes is currently with the Pride or if she is the missing lioness. And she is here. I'm not sure which one she is out of the four of them in this current state, but I did definitely get a glimpse of her earlier. It's not that one. That I can tell you, that we, that the eyes we can see. So, she is here, I'm not too sure which one is missing, or where she is. Maybe she was the lion that was vocalizing further east of us, and who knows, maybe she has been on a adventure in search of passion with the Birmingham males. Hello, Karen. You'd like to know if these ladies are having a little snooze to ready themselves for a big night out with the Birmingham boys. They could well be. They very could well be. And we're going to only find out about that in the morning. Thank you very, very much to everyone involved. And especially a big, big welcome back to Jandre, who did a fantastic job on camera, considering the only camera he's been working with is an iPhone for the last couple of weeks in Australia. So good to have you back and well done. Of course, Louise did a great job in the director's chair today with Leanne lending her hand, so thank you. And to all the viewers, especially the new ones, spread the word, keep joining in. We will be out tomorrow at 7, uh, sorry, at 5 o'clock. 5.30, sorry, Central Africa time until 8.30, so three-hour safari in the morning. Thank you all for joining, and one last quick view of the ladies. We have already snuck over time, but tonight has just been too good to stick to the schedule. So enjoy the last view of them, and we'll see you all on the Sunrise Safari.